Roe v. Wade has been overturned and there is both good news and bad news and several important lessons for Seventh-day Adventist Christians to learn from this. In this video, we will discuss the statements made by Mr. Todd McFarland, who is the legal counsel for the General Conference. As soon as Roe was overturned, he went on video trying to downplay or deny that abortion is a serious religious liberty issue, which is a huge claim coming from the legal counsel for the General Conference. He also made the claim that Adventists have never filed an amicus brief appealing to the Supreme Court defending abortion, but this is absolutely not true and he got called out on it. Also notice that the first group to come out and publish a response to Roe were black Adventist leaders in the USA trying to defend the destruction of little boys and girls as something that should be legal. Now, this is wild because the number one killer of black Americans is abortion and black Adventists are publicly defending this. We've been told that killing George Floyd out of the womb is a terrible evil that should be illegal. Gotta speak up for that. But then they say that killing George Floyd in the womb should be legal. Please take notice that when the court rejected killing children as a constitutional right, the number one demographic within the Adventist church to complain the loudest were black Adventists in the USA. It is literally on video and we will talk about that. We will also discuss what overturning Roe means for the church. It is very important to remember that there are two issues here, or actually three. What does the government teach? That's number one. What do other denominations or churches teach, especially evangelicals or Catholics? That's number two. And what does the Adventist church teach? Don't confuse these three. It's very common for people to conflate or confuse these, but we will see in a minute why it's important to keep clear in your mind the differences of these three. However, the best place to start, I think, is with a quote from a Mr. Seth Gruber, a speaker for the Life Training Institute, who said, if you are a Christian and your first response was anything but outright celebration to the overturning of Roe versus Wade, you do not have a biblical worldview. So question for you, is Mr. Seth Gruber correct? Now to understand whether or not he is right depends on several factors. First, both science and the Bible both affirm the fact the unborn are living human children. Second, it is wrong to intentionally kill children because, by definition, they are protected by the Sixth Commandment. Third, the government has both the right and the duty to legislate the Sixth Commandment. The government cannot legislate or tell you how to keep the first four commandments. That Those are matters of worship. But the government does possess the God-given authority to legislate civil society, including the Sixth. Now, it is important to know what the Supreme Court did say and did not say. The official decision of the court overturning Roe stated the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Therefore, Roe and the other case of Casey are overruled and the abortion issue is sent back for each state to decide for themselves, which is exactly how it was before it was decided in 1973. So basically, we are in the same situation before when each state decided for themselves how to forbid or regulate abortion. For all of American history, the states have decided this for themselves, but in the year 1973, the court said, no, it's for us to now decide. But now, almost 50 years later, the court has reversed itself and said, no, that was actually the wrong decision, sending it now back to the states. So this is a huge victory. It's, it is, it's hard to overstate how huge of a victory this is for the pro-life movement because the, the court has declared that abortion is not a constitutional right. However, please take note that what the court did not do, unfortunately, and this is important, the court did not in any way affirm the unborn children that unborn children are worthy of the same protections of born children. That is the gold standard. Unfortunately, they avoided this and simply said that abortion is not a constitutional right. Our opinion is not based on any view about if and when prenatal life is entitled to any of the rights enjoyed after birth. In other words, the court said we are not dealing with this issue of the value of born versus unborn children at least for now. We are simply saying that abortion is not a right. Now, as a matter of simple observation, most people follow the law most of the time. This is true whether people are Christians or not. 
Most people follow the law, follow the law most of the time. Now that abortion is or will be illegal or will be greatly restricted in many states, there will be many women who will not get an abortion, who will not destroy their child simply because the law says not to. This is not a religious view. We simply make an observation. The sky is blue, the grass is green, and most people tend to follow the law most of the time. So because of this ruling by the Supreme Court, abortion will now be illegal where it may have been previously legal and many women will not destroy their child because it is now against the law. So in this sense that tens or hundreds or thousands, perhaps millions of children over the course of time will not be killed is a very good thing. As Adventists, we can rejoice that little boys and little girls will not be wrongly deprived of their life. Second, after the decision overturning Roe was published, many American or Western Adventists especially are trying to frame this as a Catholic decision, that Catholics are imposing their dogma on the nation, but this is false and absurd for several reasons. The most obvious one being that Justice Sotomayor is a Catholic and she voted against overturning Roe. Just because someone is a Catholic does not mean that they will automatically rule or vote in harmony with the teachings of the Catholic Church. Furthermore, notice very carefully that the people making these claims are not even citing the actual decision, which is not religious, but historical. This decision by the Supreme Court is based on history. Quote, by the time of the adoption of the 14th Amendment, three quarters of the states had made abortion a crime at any stage of pregnancy, and the remaining states would soon follow. It is a historical fact that abortion had already been illegal in common law for centuries. However, in the 1800s, due to advances in scientific technology that led to the discovery of a new human life beginning at conception, the American Medical Association, not James Dobson, not Jerry Falwell, the physicians of the American Medical Association began their nationwide campaign for abortion to be codified in statutory law. And importantly, these were primarily Protestant physicians. These are historical facts. Catholics played almost no role in abortion being made illegal. Law professor and historian Joseph de la Pena notes that the Catholic Church largely remained silent on abortion in the 19th century, and Catholics generally were not involved in legislative efforts to craft legal prohibitions on abortion. And when the 14th Amendment was passed, only, you can see it for yourself, only 8 to 9 percent of the population was Catholic. So, when Adventists claim that, quote, Catholic justices of the Supreme Court overturned Roe and in doing so imposed Catholic dogma, this is completely absurd because the justices themselves specifically cited the history of Protestants who made abortion illegal to begin with. And in overturning Roe, they simply reinstated not only what was the unanimously accepted reality in an overwhelmingly Protestant nation, but notice this, it was legislation and law that was publicly affirmed by Adventist pioneers. The Adventist Church was literally founded in 1863 during the famous Physician's Crusade against abortion, and Adventists publicly praised the work of Dr. Horatio Storer, who was the director of the Physician's Crusade. So, when Adventists today say that this was a Catholic decision, not only is this absurd and ludicrous because the country was overwhelmingly Protestant, but the quote, Catholic Supreme Court is affirming truth that Adventist pioneers also affirmed. Now, this of course begs the obvious question. Were our Adventist pioneers actually secret undercover Catholics trying to lead us to oppose the killing of children? Or, or is it true that the government does actually have the legitimate God-given authority and duty to legislate the Sixth Commandment? Did God give to Caesar a certain degree of authority to protect and bring order through civil government? Furthermore, notice that these historical facts that I have shared both in this and many previous videos are the exact same facts affirmed by the Supreme Court. In many of my videos, I have repeatedly referenced th this history, especially the works by Witherspoon and Della Pena, which you can see for yourself right here, is the exact same historical research now cited by SCOTUS. This is very, very important because this is the exact same history that has been completely and routinely ignored or distorted by Adventist church leaders. And notice this. Now that this history is the basis of the court's decision, 
Notice that, to my knowledge, nobody in church leadership anywhere is claiming that this is false. You notice that? For years, people have said to me that pro-life Andrew doesn't know what he is talking about. But now the Supreme Court has made the exact same arguments and suddenly church leaders aren't talking so tough anymore. You notice that? And to appreciate the comments made by GC legal counsel, Mr. Todd McFarlane, we have to review the history. In the 1960s, during what is known as the sexual revolution, laws were being changed in the USA. Abortion, which was illegal, was now becoming legal. And the Adventist hospitals in the USA, they wanted to cash in. Cha-ching! And this is a documented fact. Adventists wanted to make money from abortion. However, they knew that church members would not accept this. So the leaders kept it a secret until the 1980s. That's when the evangelicals and Catholics began protesting Adventist support and practice of abortion on demand. How embarrassing is that history? And when these secrets got exposed in the international media like the Washington Post, Church leaders became creative and began to claim that killing little boys and girls is a sacred religious freedom that must be protected. This is, of course, demonic, but Adventist leadership are so serious about this belief that in 1989, they appealed to the Supreme Court in the case of Webster to defend killing children as a religious liberty. See the name right here, Robert Nixon. You can go right now to the official archives, look up the official yearbook. He's listed right here in black and white as the official legal counsel for the General Conference. These are all indisputable documented facts. This history is very important because it helps explain why there is today a segment of Adventists who claim that killing children is a religious freedom. Now, in over 30 plus years that they have been explicitly making this claim, they have never provided even one shred of biblical evidence, but that doesn't matter to them. They are committed to this, and because church leaders in the GC and NAD have continually refused to address or allow the world church to address this issue, now we have an entire generation of church members and leaders who have grown up really believing that abortion is freedom despite having no evidence whatsoever. When the decision to overturn Roe was published on Friday, June 24, I was very, I was very, very curious to see who would be the first people to say something, and that distinction goes to a group called Conscience and Justice Council, made up of black Adventist leaders and religious liberty folks like Miller and Reinick. I was especially interested to listen because this man here, Todd McFarland, would join who is a legal counsel for the GC, and also because they promised to discuss abortion from a theological perspective. I'll just mention the most salient points. McFarland was asked at about 39 minutes and 20 seconds in the video, from the Adventist church's standpoint, is abortion a religious liberty issue or not? And I will play the video so that you can hear his exact words. So just for clarification, Todd, because I see some things in the chat, um, from the church's standpoint, is abortion a religious liberty issue or not? So the answer to that is we have never in any statement explicitly said one way or another. We have also never argued it to the best of my knowledge is a religious liberty issue. We've never, I, I joined an amicus brief on it claiming it was a religious liberty right. We've never taken a case on that. We've never made a statement that says that a person to have an abortion is part of their religious liberty right. No, that is false. The Adventist Church's official statements on abortion, both in 1992 and in 2019, both explicitly define abortion as a matter of conscience. It is astounding that as the legal counsel for the General Conference, he would make this claim on video. He also states that we Adventists, quote, have also never argued, to the best of my knowledge, as a religious liberty issue. We've never joined an amicus brief on it claiming it was a religious liberty right. And that is blatantly false. And I heard this, and when I did so, I immediately called him out on it in the chat. And thankfully, you can go listen to the video at around 40 minutes and 40 seconds. The moderator right here, he features my, que <laughs> he features my question and asks him point blank about the amicus brief. And he denies knowing about this, which again is astounding. You are the legal counsel for the General Conference speaking about such an enormous issue and you have no idea that top Adventist leadership filed an amicus brief to the Supreme Court 
Church leaders at the GC claimed that laws against killing children are, quote, theologically derived and theological in character, and that it, read it for yourself, violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. It's literally right there in black and white. And not only does Mr. McFarland deny knowing anything about this, but what's really interesting is that he tries to downplay and deny that this is even a legitimate religious liberty issue. Now, we've been told this for over 30 plus years, and suddenly, the day that Roe gets overturned, ah, oh, it's not really a serious liberty issue. Unfortunately for him though, the rest of the panel disagreed. You can go hear it on video, especially around one hour and nine minutes when they start the theological discussion that promises to provide, quote, biblical foundations from, quote, experts, and as a matter of observation, the grass is green, the sky is blue, and this entire panel of experts is black. There are no Hispanics, no whites, and no Asians, and this is actually good because we are often told, and I've been told many times, that black American Adventists as a whole are very conservative and have very conservative values. In fact, literally just a few days ago, apparently Adventism's first black female pastor, Hyveth Williams, at the Black Regional Conference said that they are very conservative, kept repeating how conservative they are. And here we have this panel, which proceeds to claim, among other things, that there should be, quote, moral outrage to the overturning of Roe, that the day that the court overturned Roe was a, quote, sad day. Now, just take a moment to appreciate this. Black women only represent about 7% of the population yet they represent over 35% of all abortions, which means, as Kanye West points out, that since Roe was decided, over 22 million black children have been slaughtered to death, and here you have black Seventh-day Adventists defending this. We are told that black lives matter and that killing George Floyd out of the womb should be condemned and made illegal. But killing little George Floyd in the womb, oh, that's okay. And that taking away the freedom to kill their children is a quote, moral outrage and very sad. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. Pastor from Seattle, Washington on the overturning of Roe. Now, just think about this. Of all the different denominations that the news could find, they found this pastor from guess which church? That's right, the Adventist church. A pastor who celebrates Juneteenth, the abolition of slavery, is upset and sad that the freedom to kill children has been abolished. And these are not some fringe Branch Davidian offshoots from Waco. No, these are theologians and professors and religious liberty leaders inside our church. And if this is at all representative of black Adventism in the USA, then this is a serious problem. Because if you are condemned as a racist or some horrible theocrat now for standing up for the sixth commandment, then what are they going to do and say when the church finally takes a biblical stance? It is a prophetic truth that the Adventist church will one day tell the truth, especially about the sixth commandment. And in order for that to happen, we are going to have to repent. But if that is denounced as being racist and bigoted and the work of the devil, then we're gonna have serious problems in the future. One of the reasons people need to watch this discussion is because it's complete nonsense. All of their brain power put together with all of their advanced education and they still cannot provide even one single shred of evidence why the government cannot legislate the sixth commandment or why it should be legal to violently kill little children. They have absolutely nothing. And as painful as it is, I think everyone needs to watch their quote theological discussion to see just how empty, just see how vain and crazy what a complete barren wasteland this is. Adventism has supported genocide for over 50 years and even now they can't find anything to defend their claims. It's nothing but just fantasy and woo-woo. Also on the same day, Pastor Ivor Myers posted a message making the same claims that this is racist. And then again, literally just a few hours ago, he did it again, which among other things, if you stop and think about it, 
Abortion is a dream come true for racists because they have greatly succeeded leading black women especially to kill their own children. And now, black Adventist leadership zealously defend this. This is literally a racist dream come true. Anyways, more on that in an upcoming video. I have been doing a lot of interviews with black Adventists and I will report their findings in a future video. The good news of Roe being overturned is that this greatly turns the tables. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to talk about much of the legal or cultural aspects that has been covered extensively by others. In this video, I'm interested in how this affects our Adventist church because the leadership have claimed for decades that abortion is a religious freedom. And because they have no biblical evidence for their position, they have tended to, especially in North America, to try to pin this on the Roe decision and claim that this is a legal right. But the weakness of that position, which you can see, is that if you pin this on the court, and if the court were to later reverse itself, then you, are, then you now have, you are left without any claim, and that is exactly what has just happened. Adventist church leaders, they had no scripture to begin with, but what they did have was a flimsy claim upon the court. But now, even the court has reversed itself, so Adventist church leaders have nothing left. There really is nothing that they can do now except complain and call people racists. In a way, the good news is that this will not go away overnight as this issue goes back to each individual state. We can expect the issue to intensify and since Adventists have shot everything that they had and are now left with nothing but blanks, they don't have anything. What are, what are Miller and Reinick going to do? Keep chanting Catholic, Catholic, Catholic and hope that we're all so gullible? Furthermore, notice this, as I pointed out in another video, if these people truly believed that this is a religious liberty issue, then why didn't they file anything with the court? You notice that? No amicus briefs, nothing. That is exactly why we have a religious liberty department. And these folks did absolutely nothing. They didn't do a single thing at all because they knew full well that they have no argument. But now that Roe is lost, look what they're doing. They want to rush to the pews and try to bully the lay members into believing some hocus pocus fairy great theocracy has been put in place and that anyone who opposes killing children is doing the work of the devil. But this is completely ludicrous and absurd. Also, bad news or good news, depending on your perspective, is that somehow this is going to cause a problem for the church. Now, I don't know what is going to happen, but at some point in the future, the Adventist church is going to get caught. There's going to be a collision with this mess and we will eventually have to choose sides. Our position cannot, is, it is unsustainable. We can't keep doing this forever. At some point in the future, there's going to come a collision course with reality and we're going to have to choose life or we're going to have to choose death. We're going to have to choose fairy tales. We're going to have to choose the scripture. We can't keep doing this. The GC legal counsel, McFarland, hinted at this. Suppose, for example, the pro-abortion state of California demands that all hospitals support or affirm abortion on demand, especially any institutions that want accreditation or that have received state or federal funding. This would, and again, this is just pure speculation as a possible example. This would put Loma Linda in a difficult position and it would force this problem in the church. And this is why I believe many church leaders are upset that Roe is overturned because they know that it's only a matter of time until we get called out, until there's a collision. And I, of course, I can't wait for that day. The sooner the better. The overturning of Roe does not make abortion illegal. It only sends it back to each individual state and it rejects abortion as a constitutional right. This does not to have, to my knowledge, any direct or immediate impact on the church, but it, will very likely, but it very likely sets in motion a chain of events that will eventually cause a big problem. And again, I'm looking, I, I can't wait for that to happen. This is also bad news because now our opportunity as a church to stand up for the sixth commandment on the right side of Roe is now gone forever. We had an amazing opportunity for over 50 years to be a voice for the voiceless. And not only did we blow it as a church and refuse this, but we defended the genocide. And now it's even worse because the court itself has reversed its position. The Catholics have been correct to oppose abortion. The evangelicals have been correct. And now the Supreme Court, which was wrong, has corrected itself. But even after everyone has taken the right stand, the Adventist church 
still stubbornly holds on to this error. Literally, the very day that this error is renounced by the courts, the first thing the Adventists do is rush as fast as possible to oppose this and whine and cry and claim moral outrage. It is, it is difficult to overstate the significance of this. When the Catholics, Evangelicals, and Supreme Court are right and our Adventist church is wrong, that is a really bad look. It reminds us of the Bible verse, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. This also raises the question of judgment. The biblical record is clear that God will punish the shedding of innocent blood. Ellen White stated that the USA was especially under the judgment of God for slavery because it was a nation of great light. So what will God do when we have shed the blood of over 60 million children and if there are any judgments, they are going to blame the people who defended this. And as we have professed to have the greatest knowledge of Bible truth, then by our own words, by our own profession, we will be held more responsible than any other group of people. The abortion industry is bad, but they don't make a profession of being the ambassadors for the kingdom of God and claiming that they are preaching the gospel. Well, that's something that we do as James 3, 1 says, as teachers, we will receive the stricter judgment. Many Seventh-day Adventists have this idea that judgments in the future will be blamed on us unfairly. But while that may be true at some point, it does not mean that we are not responsible for any judgments at all. And we certainly are responsible for having led people to their eternal death by leading them to practice or support the murder of children. And another good lesson to learn from this is that the Catholics and evangelicals did not win this by having a prayer meeting. No, they have put decades and decades of blood, sweat, and tears into this. They have been out there on the sidewalks counseling women to save their children. They have been out there doing all that they can to get leaders elected to government who understand the proper authority of the government to protect the right to life. Adventist church leadership, however, have denounced them and cursed them and opposed them, but they continued to soldier on for over 50 years and now they have cemented their victory in history. They are not right about the fourth commandment, but they are correct about the sixth commandment. Today, Adventists, especially in North America, are saying that this will lead to the Sunday law. But this is like saying that the year 2043 comes after the year 2038. That is ridiculous. That there will be a Sunday law does not in any way have any relevance to our witness and telling the truth now about the Sixth Commandment. Suggesting otherwise is completely absurd. Ellen White and the Adventist pioneers were literally surrounded by a nationwide effort to ban abortion by legislation and there is not a single warning from anyone anywhere that such laws would hasten the dreaded Sunday law and that people today would assert something so ludicrous is a testimony to how their infatuation with Baal worship has broken their ability to reason from the scripture. Let's revisit the quote from the beginning of this video. If you are a Christian and your first response was anything but outright celebration to the overturning of Roe versus Wade, you do not have a biblical worldview. Although this man is not an Adventist, this statement right here is completely correct. The unborn are living human children and God has given the government the legitimate authority and duty to protect their life. The overturning of Roe is a fantastic day of victory. Thank God for this decision from the Supreme Court. Thank God that these justices had the courage to overturn this abomination. And thank God for all of those men and women who have worked tirelessly over the years and decades to make this happen. This is a fantastic victory. Praise God for this day. And may God give us even more victories. Anyways, that's enough for this video. Uh, doubtless, we will be seeing a lot more of this issue in the near future. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.